Julia is going to be your moderator. Am I looking where? Yeah, as long as when I ask the question, and then you're good. Are we good? Welcome back, everyone. We are pleased to welcome world number four, Colin Morikawa. Colin, talk a little bit about your preparation this week and what you're seeing from the course. Yeah, um, prep has been great. You know, obviously we had a, had a three-week stretch of uh, PGA, Colonial, and Muirfield, um, and the game feels good. You know, I, I love coming into weeks, especially a major, where you're just kind of ready to play golf and, and try and figure out the course and how you're going to beat it. Um, but this course is tough. You know, I, I've only played it once. I played the 2020 Farmers. I didn't play this year. Um, and, you know, it's going to test every part of your game. I think everyone has said that, but, you know, it's just a course where it's demanding off the tee. It's demanding with your approach shots, and you got to hit really good putts, especially with kind of Poa, Poa greens and um, a lot of slope to them. I know we're not that close to L.A., but a U.S. Open in Southern California who's here with you this week, and how does it feel to play one close to home? Yeah, our girlfriend's here. Family's going to come uh, Friday in the weekend, um, but it feels so good. I mean, when we flew in and I kind of stepped off the plane, like it – it felt good to just breathe California air. Like it's it's something about it. Like I don't care where you are in California, it just just something about it. Like it feels right. So um, it's good to be back. Like it, you just have good vibes, even though you're a couple hours from LA. And um, just yeah, I, I love being in California. We're gonna take one from the WebEx. Can you describe the rough and maybe any situation you've been in this thus far this week? Yeah, I'd, I'd say the rough is, is very thick, um, but it's pretty spotty. You know, some spots you get really lucky and the ball sits up, especially with some thick Kuya blades of grass, um, and you can get really lucky and hit some good shots out of there. And other parts, uh, the ball sits down, and you know you're trying to hack out a nine iron and just see how far it can run up. Um, so, I think a lot. If it has to do with the prep you're going to be doing throughout the week, you know, knowing where some spots you might have to be more aggressive or play a little safe um, off the tee, just knowing where some of the rough is going to be. Um, can you talk a little bit about U.S. Open week? It's meant to kind of be a bit more of a grind. How do you mentally prepare for that? Yeah, you know, I, I think the way I've looked at the U.S. Opens, I've played two U.S. Opens, um, and to be honest, I, I think I kind of psyched myself out before I even started. And... That's never something you want to do. You know, you kind of show up. Obviously, you're going to have thick rough. USGA is going to set up the course really tough. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't go out and play really well and, and play some great golf. And the two US Opens I've played, you know, I think I've done that of just not setting myself up for success. Um, so, you know, yeah, I know they're going to play it really tough. It's going to, play, it's going to be tough. Um, but I, I look forward to that. I want to embrace that this week. Right here. I want to ask you about a uh, memorial. Did you have to go through any special kind of contact tracing because you played with John? No, you know, uh, the, the tour contacted me that night, um, Saturday night. And, and you know, I, I knew kind of the details of what was going on uh, when I played with him Thursday, Friday. So I kept my distance. Um, you know, I, I respected what we needed to do as playing partners. And um, we, were, we were in very fortunate circumstances of being outside, really hot, really humid. Um, and I kept my distance. So, you know, they said I didn't need to test. And, you know, obviously I wanted to make sure I didn't feel sick or anything, but I felt fine. And, and going into Sunday, um, all I was trying to do was win. And just talk a little bit about how well he was playing from a, from a player's perspective to see what he did on, on yeah. Saturday. Oh, What level was he at and what might he do on a course that he really likes like this? Yeah, I mean, he was on a level that uh, I, I couldn't keep up for at least three days. I mean, who knows what could happen Sunday, but building a six shot lead um, through three rounds on that golf course. Uh, he was playing some amazing golf and, you know, I gave him a call Sunday night and just said, you know, I, I felt gutted for him. I, it, it, was no, it, was, it wasn't a good feeling, you know, for the next 30 minutes when you see what happened on TV um, because you knew how well he was playing. Um, so obviously he got the news that he could come out and practice. I think it was what Friday, Saturday. Um, so, you know, he's obviously a guy to look out for. All the way on the right, Christy. Uh I know you're young in your career and your career here at Torrey Pines, but are, are there a couple holes that you can point to as pivotal, pivotal to your success here? Um, you know, I, I think if we talk about the front nine, I think uh, the stretch of like six and seven are going to be huge. Not having six is a par five. Norm, you know, normally it is a par five, and you're able to hopefully get a birdie out of that. Now you're hitting a long iron into a, a good par four. Um, you know, if you're able to get out of those couple holes with just even par for the week and, and just kind of make your way into nine and make your way into 10. Um, but then you have the, the stretch of like 12 and 13, you know, and we can keep going on. But um, there's just certain holes out here where, if, you know, you make four pars, you're going to be really happy for the week. 
And the last one will be young in your career also, but how do you feel about a reg regular tour stop being a major championship venue? I love it. You know, it's, there, there comes a sense of like familiarity. Um, like I'll, I'll bring up Harding Park, for example. It's not a tour stop, but it's a course that I was able to play a lot or a good handful of times. So I felt comfortable going in. This is a course that, you know, I've only played once, but I can come out and prep and not have to try and figure out every single hole and figure out where our locker rooms are going to be. Um, so it just helps in a sense of like, for me, just getting into the week and making things a little easier. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful golf course and, you know, you've seen it in the past. It doesn't play easy. Go ahead. Obviously, growing up in Southern California, you're familiar with Kakuya and Poa Greens. What, what's your relationship with those two types of grasses? Yeah, no, I definitely grew up on it. Uh, feels like I'm a kid just coming back out. And, uh, you know, guys that are from the East Coast that just really hate Poa Greens, you know, it's just something we get used to. You know, I'm, I'm not used to Bermuda, and I've had to learn how to putt on that. And, um, but we're all professional golfers out here. For the most part, all of us are professional golfers. And... Um, we know how to adjust. We know how to get ready for events, but it's just something that you're comfortable with, and you don't have to really, you know, figure out like, oh, this lies different in the fairway. This is different in the rough. Um, obviously, I, I didn't grow up playing with <laughs> this kind of rough, though. Colin, thanks for your time. Good luck this week. All right, thanks, everyone.